Good morning. Um, welcome to the ACOM seminar today. Um, the speaker today is Dr. John Dennis. Uh, Dr. Dennis received a PhD in computer science in 2005. He's a scientist in the CISO lab at NCAR. He co-leads a research group that focuses on improving the ability of large-scale geoscience applications to utilize current and future computing platforms. His research interests include parallel algorithm and compiler optimization, graph partitioning, and data-intensive computing. Um, in today's seminar, Dr. Dennis will talk about using exascale technology to advance research in ACOM. Um, today's seminar will be more interactive, so Dr. Dennis will first spend about 20 minutes to present his talk, and then uh, the remaining time will be for uh, Q&A. And yeah, let's welcome him. Cool, thank you. Uh, so this is work done by uh, a group of uh, individuals from across NCAR um, with uh, representatives um, with names mentioned here. And um, the, the Exascale Tiger team was formed um, a while ago and the goal was to determine the best course of action to, uh, to uh, with respect to the utilization of Exascale technology to advance NCAR science objectives. And so we, we, uh, we decided to define exascale technology as GPU enablement, lossy data compression, parallelization of post-processing workflows, and cloud computing. Um, so this is kind of different than saying an exascale uh, platform, but rather um, exascale technology. Um, and so this is technology that's also going to be used to create exascale platforms. Um, and this was an NCAR wide committee, um, and we worked on this for um, for quite some time to come up with these recommendations. And uh, so this is um, the the fifth of seven talks that uh, that uh, we've given. And so the, the the first part will be kind of generic for NCAR, and then the second part of the talk will be uh, specific for for ACOM or I should say specific for each laboratory within NCAR. So we created a set of recommendations and it was based upon two sources of information. One was a UCAR wide survey that we sent out uh, a while ago. But I think the more interesting source of information was we went around to la uh, laboratory specific focus groups and we asked the question, what science would you perform if you could magically eliminate uh, limitations? And so this got, um, hopefully got people thinking and it was, it was actually quite enjoyable to get, see the scientists kind of get excited about their science and kind of describe um, what they'd love to do. And so we, we said limitations, uh, we didn't want to limit the limitations. You know, they could say maybe we can't find the graduate students to do this. Uh, maybe we don't have enough disk storage, um, et cetera. So, um, and we came up with one overall set of recommendations for uh, the NCAR directorate and then se seven uh, laboratory specific recommendations. And we view these recommendations as a starting point for further uh, discussion, um, which is why I'm hoping will be a, a, a good robust um, discussion after the talk here. Um, so, some of the background on computing trends, um, we wanted to, um, we want to be clear about exascale system versus exascale technology. Um, it's unclear if NCAR will ever purchase an exascale system. This is because they're, they're um, uh, because of the budgets, the way they look. Um, but NCAR scientists will have access to systems that are based upon exascale technology. This will either be using DOE uh, uh, systems or, um, or an honestly, derecho is based upon exascale technology. So the ability to use exascale technology is critical, um, even if you don't have an exascale um, system. Um, the, other, the other thing to keep in mind here is that the cost of electricity to, uh, to run HPC centers is, is really quite significant. And the NCAR is doing the, um, is planning on this net zero initiative. So what this is, is they're trying to reduce the carbon footprint of the entire institution. And so they're gonna 
Um, so they're going to, uh, you know, renovate buildings and put in better windows and, and stuff like this to reduce the, the electricity or carbon usage. So we, they, they project by the, the 2030 that 63 percent of NCAR's carbon emissions will come from the supercomputer. So that's including buildings, heating buildings, flying aircraft, uh, um, you know, driving vans. Um, so that's significant. And, um, and another thing to uh, note is the GPU-based computing, which is an exascale technology, is approximately th uh, three times more energy efficient than a CPU. And that's based upon current kind of uh, experience. So um, if you want to reduce, so, so basically what, what you need to understand here is if you want to do big science, then you need to be energy efficient about it. Um, if, because we all want to be good stewards of our, uh, of our uh, environment. Um, so, so there are some overall findings of the ETT committee, and they, these were kind of th uh, threads that we saw in um, virtually all or um, of the laboratories, or uh, probably even all of them. Um, th the, there was, um, so NCAR staff isn't broadly practicing exascale software development, and they cited a lack of explicit prioritization from leadership. People were just not telling them this. Uh, there was, of course, always the problematic funding issue. There wasn't funding to do this. Um, there, was, there was skill deficits with familiarity with new technology. Um, you know, the time to shift to new paradigms while still accomplishing existing workloads. And um, it also mentioned that it's a meaningful collaboration between science Scientists and software engineering with respect to modern HPC and exascale uh, practices. This was kind of, sometimes it was worse in some laboratories than others, but this was kind of a, a consistent theme. Um, the other thing that we are pretty, uh, we thought were pretty amazing was that novel science uh, outcomes and discoveries could be enabled in each and every laboratory. Um, so, um, through adapting uh, modern HPC and exascale capabilities. We, were, we, we knew that there was some, we didn't, uh, this was, came as a surprise that there was, you could benefit at every laboratory science. Um, so, um, but to, in order to achieve this, really prioritization and funding, and uh, you need to plan for this, okay? This is not telling somebody, oh, I think you should go off and do this on, on, on your Saturday afternoon when you've finished the rest of your work. You really need to prioritize it. You need to create staff, staffing that, that uh, accomplishes that. So we're suggesting that the, it's, it's actually in, incorporated into the LCPO and the NCAR strategies. Um, we, we, we're asking the, the, the various laboratories to commit to, you know, to, to think about it, commit to something, and, and to do it. We're not necessarily saying what you should do. Um, but, but I think everybody needs to have a, a response to what to do. Um, and we also thought that larger cross-laboratory software development activities are a potential opportunity um, to pursue collective culture change. We argued a lot about culture change and, um, and so I, th I think that needs to, to, to happen as far as, um, um, so the recommendations are uh, modify uh, NCARS and LCPO's strategic plan to explicitly include a response to exascale technology. Again, we're not specifying what this response should be, but it should be there. Um, foster co-design culture where science Objectives represent a collaboration between scientific and software engineering leadership. Um, the great thing is ACOM has like the, the, the um, you know, the, the test case, or it's a perfect example of what this means. And so we'll, I'll go into that in a little bit. Um, identify internal and external fundings to advance the specific responses to our recommendations. Uh, communicate to staff the importance of exascale technology on, has on the scientific mission of NCAR. And there's a complete list of recommendations. I guess it's hard to click on the hyperlink. Um, so ACOM specific. Um, most of ACOM science appears to be exascale friendly. Um, and um, 
And I hint at a, that I hinted at in the previous slide, ACOM has been making really great progress towards this, um, towards exascale. And so um, this was um, based upon a collaboration that's been ongoing between a NCAR, uh, or excuse me, ACOM and CISL. Um, there was a, a, a GPU enablement co-design um, that is, um, that is ongoing with, with Matt Dawson and his, um, his team um, and, and, uh, and the group that I'm in, and also some agile process refinement. So this is really, um, you know, we, we, we started these, we wrote these recommendations a while ago. If the recommendations look like, kind of like, oh, ACOM's already achieved some of that, that's, that's true, that, and that's great news. And this is kind of, um, the, this kind of interaction um, is what we'd like to see kind of across the, the uh, entire institution. Um, and noting that there's existing investment in GPU enablement. Um, the Mickham Chemistry Solver is one of the, one of the aspects of that collaboration, um, and then there's other, there's other chemistry solvers that uh, I guess are being considered or have been uh, con um, as well. So, um, so we want to talk about exascale for, uh, friendly science objectives. That's what I, that was the bullet item in the, the last slide. So what does that mean? Um, and well, after talking to the scientists, we tried to identify science objectives that can benefit from exascale technologies. Now, these are not science objectives that are aligned with the overall uh, institution or laboratory science objectives. They're science objectives that kind of match the technology, the computing technology that's out there. Um, and we found, we kind of broke this into three categories of science objectives, um, modest, um, it can be achieved today with like a larger allocation. Uh, we didn't, um, there's unlikely, which is not possible in the next 20 plus years. Um, there are a couple of those. Um, but I think the more interesting one is hence the name was not currently possible or easy, but possible in the next three to 10 years with significant effort. And so this was kind of where uh, an investment or uh, uh, investment in resources could actually have an, uh, an impact and make happen in, in a relative short amount of time. Um, so, so this was what we came up with from the ACOM. And again, um, almost all of the science objectives are up there. Um, they were talking about very large chemical species networks, um, you know, jumping maybe in, uh, significantly larger than what you're, what's currently run in production now, um, using, using LES scale simulations for several days to weeks, or uh, uh, three to five kilometer simulations for shorter time scales. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the science objectives that was mentioned was longer term simula simulations, so maybe running 10, 100 years. Uh, this would be run um, for kind of more like climate scales. Unfortunately, this is not a real great match to, to the, the technology. And so, um, but the, the kind of the, the high resolution uh, short time scales is a good match to, to exascale technology. So um, that's why we, we, um, uh, we mentioned these particular science objectives. Um, specific exam, uh, challenges for ACOM. So um, lack of a GPU enabled chemistry solver. This was, this was, um, this is in process again. It's, um, if, I gave, if I gave this talk probably in a couple of months, then I probably would have to you know, mark that off uh, because we're making really great progress towards this. Um, there was another specific challenge was uh, the GPU enabled host model plus chemistry solver. So um, for example, you know, you have some host models here, CM1, Fast Eddy, MPAS A, and CAM CSM. Uh, so the, you know, the, the host models that are GPU enabled, CM1, Fast Eddy, and MPAS A, uh, uh, my understanding is that they do not currently have integration with Musica, um, where the CAM CSM is not GPU enabled, and, uh, but it does have integration with Musica. And, um, and so, you know, again, we're, we're, we're quite close to having a GPU-enabled chemistry solver. 
or it's in the development plans, I should say. Um, so other specific challenges limited by disk storage. Um, we recognize that a very uh, that you generally have very large output files to the high species counts, um, and uh, you know this was indicated that 64 percent of the respondents indicated the moderate to severely limited by disk space. Um, and then the data analysis of large data volumes is difficult. Um, so specific recommendations. Um, this is underway. Lack of a GPU-enabled chemistry solver, GPU-enabling the, the MICM solver. This is uh, something that's been underway for a while. It's gonna be, it's gonna be supported natively. Um, and so, um, but I mean, there's, there's still work to be done. And you know, again, the goal, this, this kind of needs to be a co-design, right? And this is, this is an example of, the, uh, of a co-design process that, that it would be great if it was replicated kind of throughout the entire institution is, uh, this was, you know, this is a collaboration with, with, uh, with Matt Dawson and his team and, um, and uh, ASAP to, to design this. And so there may be some compromises. For example, you want to minimize the time to solution and that may, you may do some counterintuitive things like maybe you don't minimize the time step, right? Um, but, but again, the goal is to minimize the time to solution. Um, lack of GPU enabled host uh, model plus chemical solver. Um, I don't know what the I I don't know what the plans of this are, but um, but if you if you could have a you know music of support in, in a uh, um, CM1 fast eddy or M pass A, then you could kind of bring both of those two capabilities together. Um, you know, one of the other things that I wanted to mention is is you know when I was when we were looking through all, all these science objectives, um, ACOMS kind of stood out because. Um, it was. It looked like the lowest hanging fruit, in the sense of there was ongoing software development. It was a good match for GPUs, and uh, it was a strategically important science objective because it was. It was also one of SEMA's um, kind of indicated science objectives. So it, it felt like, you know, you could just push it a little bit, um, and you could bring together kind of breakthrough science, um, and so that was that was that was kind of exciting. Um, and in uh, the most lowest hanging fruit that we could see in the entire NCAR. Um, limited by disk storage, um, you know, there, there, there has been uh, work done looking at lossy data compression. Um, and this, this work, a lot of this work has been done focusing on kind of standard variables like temperature and velocity and precipitation and stuff like this. Um, I have no idea um, how it would, uh, how it would play with chemical species. And I think this is something to kind of, to look at. Um, I'm, I'm concerned that it may be kind of challenging, but that's kind of an unknown. Um, and data analysis of large data volumes is difficult. And we encourage the ACOM staff to uh, the ESDS community and a Earth System Data Science. Uh, it's, a, it's a group that kind of focuses on, on, on these large data volume kind of analysis um, efforts. So I think that's the end of my formal talk. So I'm hoping that I get some feedback. Uh, thanks, are you defining exascale as three orders of magnitude beyond petascale? Um, I'm, I'm defining it, oh gosh, I'm not defining it that closely. I'm, I'm basically, there, there's uh, exascale systems that are being deployed, for example, at, at uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratories and in uh, Japan. Those are based upon technology and I'm, so I'm saying that technology is what exascale technology is. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So I think this is really interesting, but I'm a little confused about really what, uh, related to Carl's question, what really exascale is. So you had a bullet list in one of your early slides. Yes. 
And some of those terms I don't know since I'm not a software engineer. Okay. I wonder if you could go back there and define, I mean, tell us what each of those things really is. Certainly. Okay. So, Thanks. so, so, uh, yes. Sorry. Uh, so, so the, the technology, so GPU enablement means uh, GPU versus CPU based computing. So, um, so derecho has been deployed with both CPU and, and a smaller percentage of the system of, is with GPU. So the, the, the GPU enables kind of an acceleration if your science and your software supports it. Uh, for example, it was, uh, we, we did um, the ASD science allocations and um, you know, and, and we, and it was running like six times faster with, with CM1, this, uh, this particle, sim, uh, Lagrangian particle simulation. So this is different, uh, different computing technology. Lossy data compression is um, you're throwing away some of the bits of your initial calculation. And you're doing it in such a way that your science is not uh, uh, changed. That's the goal. And so you can have a, a, a smaller amount of disk storage um, on disk. Uh, parallelization of post-processing workflows. So um, one of the things that we consistently found was that people would generate these large data sets and then they would take like months and months to, 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 uh, to analyze. They, they would shuffle them onto disk and onto, the, uh, onto tape and you know, it's just, so you need to speed that up so that you can so that you don't overwhelm your disk and you get the, the time to discovery is minimized. Cloud computing, um, this is taught, so cloud. Um, so right now we have an on-prem, so derecho is an on-prem or on-premises system. So it's, it's something that's run by NCAR and it's, it's, it's specialized, you know, because they, they know the, the, the community. Cloud computing says Amazon will give you a server for uh, 12 hours somewhere in the world, and they will charge your credit card $12.13. So it's a business model. Um, so. Okay, thanks, thanks for the nice talk. And actually, I was working here 10 years ago, and I'm just visiting here now, so I'm not the right person to ask this question. But I really agree with that, that uh, environmental friendly and energy efficient computing is really important thing. Yes. Yeah, but, so, but kind of to scientist side, the kind of uh, transition needs some kind of effort because 10 years ago we talked about GPU computing for kind of WAF and MPAS things and yeah. it's still, it takes a really long time to get GPU enabled version. Yeah. So that means that we need some kind of technical or funding support to kind of uh, encourage that kind of movement. And is there any funding source or some NSF, some kind of program supporting this kind of thing? I think so, that would be leveraging this. Thing. Yeah, so this is an excellent question. There's, there's, uh, there's an initiative that it's a software, uh, software facility initiative that, um, that we're working on. And um, it, it would provide funding to, uh, for a significant amount of uh, software um, uh, engineering effort. And that hopefully will come about. Um, it, it's, 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 it's a large, large amount of money, and I think a large amount of money is needed for this. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the advantages here in ACOM is that Matt has been, Matt and his team has been doing a really good job because they've kind of, they're, they're designing the new version of the Mickham solver for, for music and music um, to be kind of, um, to be able to be compiled of for either CPU and GPU. And, and we're helping them make sure that it runs efficiently on the GPU. So in theory, uh, it's sometime in the future when that code comes out, you'll be able to flip a switch and use GPUs. Um, that's, that's kind of the, the, the thing that you want for all scientists at NCOR. So, but, and, and, and the user community, so you, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. 
So you mentioned that some of the longer term, like 100 year model simulations don't really work with exascale technology. What's the reason for that? Um, there, there's, a, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, so one of them is the longer term simulations are run through, CS, through CAM or CSM, and that's not GPU enabled. It's, it's, it's a work in progress, but I think it's further away. But there's a more fundamental reason that because you need you, you need many years of simulation. And because you need 100 years or something order, similar order of magnitude, you need to run quite fast. And because you need to run quite fast, you, you shrink the size of the problem. And so by shrinking the size of the problem, you don't give the, the GPU enough to basically uh, exercise all the parallelism that, has a, that it has on it. So it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of a, it's unfortunate, and, and it's not—it's not particularly fair because when I was talking to the, the you know, the scientists, they, they were all chemists. One, you know, one was interested in, in climate scale, and another one was interested in LES. And I'm like, I can't help the person with climate scale. I wish I could. We got some question from people online, so. Uh, this one said, thanks for speaking on this issues. After highlighting recommendation for ACOM, could you share your experience participating last year's open hackathon event? Would you recommend that ACOM folks apply for a 2024 event? And how would you suggest that they benefit most, the most from the hackathon? Uh, so I actually didn't participate in the ACOM event. Um, so I, I feel a little bit challenged. Uh, I, I, I went with another project, and, but the ACOM event actually, uh, or the, the ACOM folks actually made really great progress on the, in the work. And so I, I, think, it, I think it's, uh, it, it, you know, you get, so this open hackathon, you, you get access to, to experts, you get to focus um, on this particular topic for a week, which is a wonderful thing, I think, at NCART, because it feels like you're always switching between one, one item to another. So, uh, so I, I think that's um, recommend that ACOM folks apply for the, and how would you suggest that they benefit the most from the hackathon? I, you know, I, th I, think, I think Matt's doing a great job, honestly. Um, you know, in, in, the sense that, in the sense that there's software engineering needs that fall outside of the Musica package, I think that would, that would be a, another something to do, but I mean, if, if, you're, if your science is satisfied by music or it's, uh, or will be soon, yeah. Okay. Do we have more questions? Yeah, in CAM, um, not only did we solve the chemical equations, we also transport a lot of tracers around for yes. chemistry. Is there an effort to accelerate the transport of tracers? Well, I mean, you're, you're using the existing infrastructure in CAM, right? Right. To do that. Um, well, I mean, you know, certainly E3SM, which is, um, has, has I believe a solution for that. Um, it's not, it's, I don't think it's being focused on um, right now. But yes, that's a critical aspect. You can't just all do the, 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 the chemistry equations. Um, I, I can maybe give an Earthworks perspective on that answer. Okay. <laughs> so, so, um, as part of Earthworks, we're, we're working on GPUs in CAM. Um, so far, we've, we've tackled CLUB, um, MG3, slash PUMAs, as well as um, the radiation R TMGP. And what we're planning on doing is flipping the switch on all of those and just running on GPUs and reprofiling the code and seeing where the hotspots are. So aerosols might pop up. Um, if it, it's, it's debatable. So for Earthworks, it's, it's an ambitious project. What we're trying to do is run CSM-like um, infrastructure at 3.75 
global kilometer resolution. So we may need aerosols or we may not. If we do need them in these simulations, it may be the next hotspot and we would tackle it at that point. Ideally, you know, we will get to all of CAM, um, but depending on time and, and funding and things like that, it may come faster, or may come slower, but we, we do have those plans. And you know it's under constant construction too. So if it's under very active development, it's harder for us to do that porting at that time. Um, so depending on the development is where that might might happen too. So so the question was, can we run all of CSM on GPUs um, under Earthworks? That would not be possible. Um, so what Earthworks actually consists of is CAM along with uh, the land model within CSM, but we're not GBUizing that at this point. And we're also, this is where we break off, we are using MPAS Ocean and MPAS Sea Ice. Um, so CAM, yes. Everything else, no at this moment in time. Okay, details offline. <laughs> oh. Okay, this. How do you plan to persuade from... the scientists and software engineers at NCAR to adopt and learn the GPU technologies? Or do you pl plan to provide the GPU enablement services solely from your group? All right. No. <laughs> the, uh, we, so, um, this is a, a group member, so I, <laughs> almost a plant question here. Um, so th there, you know, there, there's really a need to become more comfortable with this kind of throughout the, the institution. We, we are not staffed to be able to do all the GPU enablement services solely from a rather small group. Um, the approach that we're taking is let the science lead. And so, um, so the, so the motivation was this is the science that you can, that, that is possible that GPU would enable in the, in the fairly short term. And, you know, investments need to be made and, and strategic priorities need to be set to, to achieve that. Um, so, you know, one of the, so I'll, I'll just go over the ACOM uh, thing that had a strong ACOM's tie-in that I thought was like, oh, we could do this pretty quickly. Um, I can't remember the scientists, but anyway, she was like, I'd love to do a uh, high resolution, uh, continental scale uh, uh, chemistry simulations over the continental United States or maybe over China and you know, do it at uh, three kilometers or something like that. And, uh, and she was like, I'd love to be able to do that. And I'm like, well, you know, we have the pieces in place, that are the, you know, the things that are in motion. That could be done pretty quickly. Um, if you if you set the if you set the mind to it so and this also looks a whole lot like a SEMA uh, uh, one of the SEMA test projects that was mentioned so you know the possibilities are really strongly there but you know if there's so if there's no motivation for, you know to, to to go after these big science opportunities then that kind of that kind of is challenging so. And do we have another one? Okay. No? Okay. Do we have more questions in the room? Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, John, for this yeah. interesting presentation. Um, and and we'll, we'll be around and, and we'll be eating cafe, you know, lunch afterwards if people have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. I'll see you in two weeks for the next ACOM seminar. Thank you. Thanks.